Greetings to you all, my people, and welcome to another episode of Damole News. All right, my people. So, Charlie Boy reacts after Tinibu's aid by your Onanuga address and insulted Peter Obi, calling him Bitter Obi. And also on this news, Atiku Abubakar blast Tinibu. According to him, he said that Tinibu has put his personal interest above the country. All right, I'm going to be giving you guys the full details of this news, but please help us by liking and sharing this video so that YouTube and Facebook can recommend it to more people. Thank you. So, by your Onanuga, the spokesperson for Bola Tinibu has accused the 2023 presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Mr. Peter Obi of Demarketing Nigeria, despite his own involvement in spreading misinformation. Onanuga, who took to his social media handle to echo a post labeling Obi as a bitter person and a chief mourner for allegedly tarnishing Nigeria's image during a visit to Canada. Peter Obi, who visited Canada, criticized the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, and voiced concerns about the conduct of the last presidential election. So despite the validity of Obi concerns, Onanuga opted to portray him negatively quoting and labeling Obi as bitter person on his personal social media handle. Though Peter Obi's recent visit to Canada has been a subject of controversy, with some criticizing his remarks while others support his right to express his opinion. So, it is worth noting that Onanuga attempts to paint Obi in a negative light comes amidst a backdrop of controversy surrounding Tinibu's political ambitions and allegations of misinformation spread by his camp. So, Nigerian musician and activist Shas Oputa, popularly known as Charlie Boy, has reacted after Bayo Onanuga, the special advisor to President Bola Ahmed Tinibu on information and strategy, addressed Peter Obi as Bitter Obi. Charlie Boy, on reacting to a post that he shared on his S handle on Monday, he said calling Peter Obi such a name is disgusting and uncalled for. Charlie Boy said any attack on Peter Obi is an attack on the well meaning Nigerians. He, however, warned Onanuga to refrain from attacking Peter Obi. So, according to his words, he said, We are saddened and disappointed at Mr. Bayo Onanuga for addressing Peter Obi as Bitter Obi, such disgusting name, calling an active and dedicated citizen like Peter Obi, who have never sponsored any form of violence against the state. Or the government is uncalled for. He continued by saying, as loyal supporters of Peter Obi, any form of attack on Peter Obi is an absolute attack on well meaning Nigerians. But your Onanuga must refrain from attacking Obi as such will not give Nigerians the needed good governance, rather. Mr. Bayo must focus on the fall of Nera, insecurity, hunger, poverty, corruption, revering the incompetent government of Tinibu. So, talking about Tinibu, Atiku, in a statement on Sunday through his media aid, Paul Ibe, said that instead of implementing policies and strategies to promote investment, Tinibu is busy prioritizing personal and family interests above national interests. So, speaking against the background of the Lagos Calabar Coastal Highway project, Atiku said the presence of Sheyi, son of President Tinibu, on the board of the company owned by those handling the project is a conflict of interest. He added that the destruction of the landmark beach without any compensation for the owners is a red flag for investors who may be considering investing in Nigeria. So, the former vice president therefore advised Tinibu and his economic team to do less propaganda and focus on improving the ease of doing business in the country as this remained the shortest part. The former presidential candidate stated that to add insult to injury, this project that is being done in excess of $30 billion was awarded without a competitive bidding from all indications. The so-called Badagri Sokoto Highway would be awarded in a similar fashion at an enormous cost to taxpayers purely because Tinibu has put his personal interests ahead of the Nigeria people. He continued by saying Tinibu has been globetrotting in search of foreign direct investments. He claims to have secured over $30 billion from various companies, 
but no has been forthcoming. Rather, all manufacturing firms have been posting heavy losses, while some are exiting due to its poorly implemented exchange rate unification policy, with even Aliko Dangote describing it as a huge mess at the recent annual general meeting of Dangote Sugar Refinery. The IMF, in its latest report, stated that Nigeria will, by the end of the year, become the fourth largest economy in Africa behind South Africa, Egypt, and Algeria, a disgraceful development for a nation which was the largest in Africa by a man while the PDP left the stage in 2015. Investors are seeing how local businesses are being treated and will not come to a place where their investment will not be protected. In Sana claims, businesses such as Landmark would have been given at least two years notice in order for effective planning, but Tinibu's eagerness to satisfy his business partners impaired his ability to coordinate the project properly. The awarding of the Lagos Calabar Coastal Highway was a rush, the environmental impact assessment report that was not even completed, the right of way for the 700 km stretch of the highway project was not secured. It was converted from a PPP to a government-funded project within the twinkle of an eye. The 500 million that was approved by the National Assembly for the project was ignored, while other 1 trillion naira was released by Tinibu administration without approval from the National Assembly. From falsely claiming to have removed subsidies to secretly paying billions monthly based on the revelation of NASA Aero 5, the Tinibu administration has shown a lack of coordination and transparency, failing to even explain to Nigerians why there is petrol scarcity across the country. Yeah. With an Indian doctor, they used to go to India to do this. All of a sudden, they are going to be reported in India. That's the job because the people who are there are not clapped in the system. They made up their mind. Nothing will change. It is you now that will say, okay, you are the ones now who are going to, when you talk about global citizens, global citizens have no tribe. You are the one who is going to abolish. So we can go to that place and buy. <coughs> Show me the trap that has 24 hour electricity. So we can go there and leave. Show me the trap that have roads that are packed. So we can drive there. Show me the trap where that is secure. So we can go there and leave. But whenever there is an election, they bring it in. After election, every trap is insecure. Every time is something. Every time. But show me religion that buys very cheap in Nigeria. So I can go there and buy bread. So them, if Muslims start to do that, they say bread is cheap at the mosque. Christians will go there and buy the bread. They will buy it after they, they, they finish the prayer. They go to their church. <laughs> But it's not so. In this country, the central mosque in London, the land was given by the poor who is not Muslim. In Dubai, the Catholic Church in Dubai, a Indian so my people that is it for you all i saw this news and i decided to share it with you guys so please let me know your opinion in the comment section and please help us by liking and sharing this video so that youtube and facebook can recommend it to more people thank you so much for your time and god bless you amen